be talking about the very emotional journey that is infertility. Sufi Mahonin is a Surface Paradise based writer and her personal story of being blessed with a daughter, then being shocked by infertility when she tried to have a second child is in our latest Mums at the Table magazine. Now infertility and the struggle to even become pregnant is a fairly common one these days with IVF Australia saying it affects one in six Aussie couples of reproductive age. Now Mel, can you help me unpack her story a little bit? Well, her story was exactly what you said. So basically, <laughs> she she didn't realise that she had, you know, infertility issues because, you know, she had a daughter already and then just as they're trying for the second one, realised that, hang on, there's things wrong with her eggs and mm. they couldn't do it. So um, in her journey, she's interviewed a few different doctors about what she can do to actually help because um, she's thinking that it might be her body as well. And so the doctors came up with, the different doctors overall, overarchingly basically said that, you know, it's it's, there are, opportunities to increase your chances of being more fertile mm. through um, healthy diet, through exercise. There's a bunch of different supplements that they've suggested as well. Uh, so that's that I believe is pretty much what the, her, the article is talking about, about, her findings and her own journey. Yeah, it was a really, it was, she, she did it well because it, it can be really confronting. And having been someone who's been through IVF and going through that journey of not knowing what the outcome might be, it, it can be really, it's a very emotional journey. It's very taxing on you emotionally. Um, but I really respected her story because her story's not finished. Usually when you hear a story from someone, it's, it's when they've sort of finished that journey, they have their children, but hers is sort of part way through. So it was a really, really good story. What do you think, Rach? Yeah, I just, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I was just really, um, I thought it was so insightful, the different things that the doctor said, as you said, that mm. she could do. And, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just explaining like how weight can have an impact on a woman's fertility or not having enough vitamin D or other things like that. Yeah, so sometimes when you're infertile, you don't feel as though you can maybe have any impact on that, you know? And it's so easy to blame yourself. Mm. And like, you don't necessarily have a say in it, but it's so easy to sit there and go like, this is my fault. I can't, I can't provide this child for my husband or partner or, and it's easy to sit there and sort of get into that zone where you're mentally not healthy to take it on either. I'm actually a bit curious, Rachel, because it's your personal experience. You had, you went through IVF. Yep. Was it your first or or subsequent children that you were trying to conceive? So first. first. Yeah, so we had tried for a while absolutely nothing um, and went and saw the specialist. They couldn't they couldn't even work out what the problem was. So I can't even I can't even share that there was a problem. There was just nothing at all happening. Um, and they were they were shocked. They couldn't even explain it either, but it seemed to kickstart something and, and, and the next two were accidents because we weren't expecting that. But um yeah, it's very financially and emotionally um, taxing journey. Did it affect like the relationship between you and your husband? Absolutely. And I think particularly it was for me, it affected me more than him. Like he was really comfortable whether we had kids or we didn't have kids. Um, but for me, it was just something I really wanted. And for I didn't expect it. And I, I had this fight inside me because originally I didn't necessarily want my own kids. It didn't bother me. And then for some reason, something kicked in and I wanted them and I was just so determined and I didn't know how to let go of it. And I'm not, I'm not sure how I would have handled not being able to have them. I, it was the closest I've ever been to God. I can tell you that I spent a lot of time in the Bible and a lot of time in prayer. It's really interesting because for women, you have this kind of desire, like I was the same. Initially, you don't feel like, oh my gosh, I want kids. But once you have it in your head that you want them, yeah. it's this thing you kind of start clinging to. And it's like that emotion can make you um, have trouble falling pregnant as well, like mm. getting stressed. So you're trying to like keep your stress levels down. And everyone's oh, like, relax, yeah. go, yeah. On yeah. go on a holiday. <laughs> like, go on a holiday. Yeah, it was tricky. Yeah. Um, but I loved how she wrote in the article, do your own research, because I think people don't necessarily expect it. You don't know, know if it's coming, whether it's mm. going to be a hard journey I or not. I think that's medically, it, I, I think it's not just whether you're pregnant or not. I think if you have anything medically wrong with you, do your own research, because the more you know, the more you're enabling yourself to get the answers. Yeah. But actually what surprised me was, you know, I've always just thought infertility is there's nothing you can do about it. Mm. Yeah. Except for IVF. But then, you know, what she suggested, like that you can actually have different kind of supplements, your lifestyle change and things mm. like that. It, it makes me think like it's it has to do with a lot of other different medical, a lot of medical mm. stuff as well. We, we really need to look at, at our lifestyle. Yeah. And just food and, and, you know, things like 
she said CQ10 and and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And you think there is a lot more behind this than just what yeah. we think. And there's, there's also the age thing, I think, that puts a bit of pressure on us as well. Women tend to be having kids later, but... It is, a, it is a sensitive issue and, and you're welcome to reach out to us if it's something you're going through as well.